4.5 million converts. And uh, they just continue to, uh, last I heard, I think it was like 30,000 missionaries in America, but that was like 10, 15 years ago. Excuse me, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I did the math, I was 450,000. There you go. <laughs> I get it in a minute, I'm slow on those numbers, but... But, and of course, they don't get that many every year. They have been, their, their growth has, has been continuing to grow, but it has been flat for the last three to four years. They have not increased the percentage of growth, but uh, still, just by sheer weight of numbers, and those figures are a few years old, so, but sheer weight of numbers, they're gaining converts. Okay, so uh, that's mainly the reason the Latter-day Saints, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, is so large today. The organization, the missionary program, the... And the image. Uh, and you said they had a lot of money to put into their mm -hmm. proselytizing efforts. Uh, do they have any uh, corporate holdings or any yeah, kind of... Uh, their tithing income is roughly, tithing and offering income is roughly $12.6 million a day. That figure is about three or four years old. Then their business income, their corporate holdings would probably double that. And people often ask me, well, uh, doesn't the Mormon church still own Coca-Cola? And I said, well, they never did. <laughs> or how about Pepsi? Disney? No, they don't own either one of those. I never have. They may have owned stock in them. And I think the church may have owned some local bottling companies. You know, Coca-Cola and those other companies do bottling and that sort of thing. Uh, Mormons own stock in companies today. They used to own whole companies. You know, mm -hmm. uh, they own ranches. They own the largest cattle ranch in the state of Oklahoma. They own more land in central Florida than Disney does. Mm. Uh, Deseret Ranch down there. And they own a lot of uh, business ventures, insurance companies, uh, <clears throat> power companies, radio stations. They own two or three of the big radio stations in Dallas um, and some other places. But they don't own whole companies anymore for the most part. Uh, they uh, will own stock in one today and may sell it tomorrow. You know how the companies will do. So, uh, but, the, but the Mormon church's corporate income probably doubles their tithing income per day, so you can kind of figure it out. I always uh, thought of, uh, you know, when I thought of Mormon holdings, I always thought of like the Marriott Hotel. Yeah, well, unfortunately, that's not true. J.W. Marriott is a Mormon, very much so. He was interviewed on 60 Minutes, and uh, uh, it was interesting to watch his uh, non-answers that he gave to Dan Rather and those guys. Uh, <clears throat> Mike, Wallace, Mike Wallace is who interviewed him, but <clears throat> it was interesting to watch his non-answers. The, the problem is, is that he is LDS, and if... Uh, uh, that sort of thing. A part of the profit he makes, 10 to 35 percent of the profit he makes goes straight to the Mormon church. So uh, and you're asking whether or not that's a Mormon owned. Well, I'd say no, it's not owned by the Mormon church, but it is owned by a Mormon who is faithful and does tithe off his um, income to I the think, church. I think it was a couple of years ago, my parents stayed in a Marriott hotel, and my mother was uh, uh, saying that there was a, a Book of Mormon in a drawer next to her bed in a hotel room. I was quite so. surprised recently I had a, to go to something in Tulsa, Oklahoma and had no choice because I'm not going to take the radio, the time for the show to tell you but I had no choice to stay in the Marriott. I did everything I could to keep from it. <laughs> but I did, but there was no Book of Mormon. Really? Now, I've not, that's not always the experience, guys. A friend of mine who's in business or company sends them to something and they have to stay in a Marriott and the company pays for it. They'll bring me back a Book of Mormon every time. But I noticed in Tulsa, Oklahoma, around the corner from Oral Roberts University, right there in the, with churches on every corner, that there was no Book of Mormon. And I checked with some other folks who were there for the same reason I was. There was no Book of Mormon in their room either. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm suspect of the fact that it was probably because of where we were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that makes a lot. And remember I said a moment ago, one of the reasons they go to the image. Mm -hmm. I mean, and whenever you have Mormonism, image over substance. Image over substance. You see a Mormon commercial, you get a lot of image. You get no substance. In fact, uh, let's pursue this for a moment. Uh, there's people out there watching us right now. We're trying to inform them a little bit sure. more on Mormonism. Uh, most likely they're going to, sooner or later in their life, if they haven't already had the experience several times, uh, are going to have the two young gentlemen mm -hmm. uh, knocking on their door with the name plates on their mm -hmm. white shirts and their ties. And, uh, you know, two young guys, probably around 18 years old or so. And 19, probably. 19, 19. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have to their high school first. Right. Okay, and uh, they do this mission for about two years, is that right? Right, two years. And uh, they'll be facing these two young young guys at their door, although when I went to the opening of the Mormon Temple in Dallas that one year, uh, I gave my name at the end on this mm -hmm. register or mm -hmm. something, and should, I had two uh, Mormon missionaries show up at my door, but they were called like sisters. They were, right, two sister missionaries. Yeah, it was well, wild. I, never said, I, didn't, I didn't know that they had lady missionaries. And they go for about 18 months. Right, mm -hmm. so that was a real surprise, but uh, 
outside of that, what the, the viewer out there, you say, all right, what, a, what kind of program are these Mormon missionaries going to try to bring to me to get me proselytized in a church? What, what am I to expect? What, what is their, their modus operandi? I would say? Well, let's begin with the image, and I'm going to let Robert do the things. I'm going to borrow your book of Mormon. Oh, yeah. Let's suppose you're watching television tonight, and the news is over, and um, the anchor says that's the way it is, or whatever he says to end the news, and the camera fades to black as we're used to having. We know what's coming. A commercial, right? The young lady who's blonde, blue-eyed, the epitome of collegiate young America is standing there looking into the camera, and she looks right into the camera and says, Hi. I'm so glad you're here. I, I just love the Bible, don't you? And I love to read about the Lord and read about the Bible. Don't you love to do those things? And she's walking, and we learned that this is probably a college campus anywhere in America. You know, she's walking. She walks into this library. She says the same things as she walks with a stack of books. My, don't you love God and love the Bible and love to read about it? Oh, here's a book that will help us learn about the Bible and learn about God. It's the Book of Mormon, another testament of Jesus Christ. And she holds it up to the screen. And based on the information, we've been able to glean that if it's a nationwide commercial, over, over uh, 300,000 people will call that toll-free number that flashes at the bottom of the screen. Mormon missionaries have learned that if they can get that person on the other end to let them hand-deliver a copy of the Book of Mormon, that over half the people they get to see will become converts to the Mormon church. Mm. So, image. And that's how they get in your door. That image. Oh, isn't she sweet and wonderful? And doesn't she love Jesus? Now Robert's going to tell you some of the things they'll tell you. Yes, this is uh, the current missionary discussions. I've got all six of them here, and no use going through all that. This is the first one, The Plan of Our Heavenly Father. And you would expect that with that kind of a title, it would talk about the plan of salvation in, if not exquisite detail, certainly enough detail that you could understand how one has to act, what one has to do, etc., in order to gain eternal life. And we go down here, and I'm not going to read everything. Uh, missionaries can do that if they come to your house, although that is not recommended, and we'll get into that later. But uh, we believe in God, but they don't tell you which God. God is perfect, but they don't tell you that in Mormonism, God isn't perfect. He doesn't know everything. He is not everywhere. He is not all-powerful. He can make mistakes. He can cease to be God. Uh, God is our Father in heaven. But they don't point out that that is meant literally. God literally is married and literally has spirit children. And, and we could go down, down through this, all this stuff, and this the missionaries don't give you. They'll give you this, which is much briefer, even less detailed. And what it is is a sales program. Mormon missionaries who may not have ever been active in the church before get nine weeks of training if they're going to an English-speaking mission. It's longer for language training if they're going somewhere where there's another language. Nine weeks of training, not in theology, not in doctrine, not in how to lead people to Jesus, but in how to sell the Mormon church using this program. And while they don't have to learn it verbatim anymore, they have to follow it, they have to go by what's here. Uh, the average Mormon and not even the average Mormon, I should say, and not, the, not a Mormon missionary cannot just sit down and spontaneously lead someone to Jesus. Nor can he do it using the program because it's not about leading people to Jesus. If you like our YouTube channel, please subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button and then by also clicking the bell above to get an automatic update whenever we produce another YouTube video for our See Answers TV channel. Please share our videos with your friends and relatives. May God bless you. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what is done for Christ will last. To see the full length video, please select by tapping on the first screen to the right. To see the entire playlist where this particular video is found, select by tapping on a touch screen on a cell phone or by clicking on a regular computer, the second screen to the right.